Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. I'd like to welcome you all to this second part of our second set of lessons on Webpack, sponsored by Eduonix. My name is Matthew Raymer, and I'm looking forward to guiding you through the virtual jungle which is Webpack and why you need it. To appreciate why you need Webpack, it's worth making a few observations about how the field of web development has been changing so rapidly on how we do things these days. Back in the good old days, before front-end libraries and frameworks, JavaScript development was just a simple JavaScript file included in your HTML file. But now, in CSS, we have multiple libraries and frameworks to use. This situation makes front-end development increasingly challenging. The same can be said for the entire JavaScript ecosystem, front-end, back-end, mobile, etc. Not only that we have changing libraries and frameworks to use, but we also have module and language standards, which have been progressively changing for over a decade from IFI to ES6 and beyond. Now, the big three frameworks like Angular, React, and Vue have burst onto the scene over the past few years as well. With those things in mind, I want to spend a few minutes summarizing how Webpack is being used in the web development industry. This is going to be a love fest, so do not expect any criticism in this lesson. It's going to be all positives, but with a little warning message at the end. I understand that many of these examples are going to overlap in their functionality somewhat, but I wanted to at least loosely organize them into categories. Generally, articles on Webpack will start with the low-level technical benefits of using Webpack, but I'm going to start with the higher-level benefits to developers. First of all, learning Webpack gives you an opportunity to better understand web development in the present time, both the features and the problems. Angular, React, and Vue depend on Webpack to build their boilerplates and their ready-made app for developers to be able to start coding their prototypes. Boilerplates rely on Webpack because they are built on modules and libraries. Webpack will allow you to understand how boilerplates work under the hood, therefore to understand the modern front-end ecosystem. Webpack has most of the development industry using it, thus information and advice are readily available. Webpack is still evolving, adding new features, such as async chunk loading and prefetching. As Webpack matures, so can you, too, as long as you can keep up with the changes. Ultimately, continuous learning is one of the habits that distinguishes good developers from excellent ones. Webpack offers ample opportunity to learn more in the world of web development. So, with those benefits to the developer highlighted, let's go down the hierarchy of benefits to those benefits which are to the processes of web development. If you've worked in development for very long, you will have noticed that NPM and YARN appear across the web development landscape, not only in JavaScript-centric development. Webpack works perfectly with NPM and YARN providing powerful features due to the vast number of libraries available for NPM and YARN. Webpack is perfect for importing resources, and this leads to a good workflow pattern for development and design. We can use Webpack to interpret commands where native support for those isn't what it needs to be. Webpack can speed up development work. With HMR, Hot Module Replacement, your page doesn't need to trigger full reload just to reflect your changes on your JavaScript code. 
CSS code can also benefit from HMR by adding CSS loaders in your Webpack config. This makes for fast development and cuts back the time it takes for the page to fully load while debugging. Webpack automates the process of downloading and including modules. It is used often in frameworks and libraries. You can actually see the benefits in using Webpack, especially if you're developing single page applications. For React, Webpack can use transpilers such as Babel alongside it to transpile JSX syntax into readable JavaScript code. Webpack gives you assurance of control over your build system. Webpack is open to various build systems, but with Babel and Tracer, you will need to transpile ES6 Plus code to make JavaScript run compatible with older browser versions. Webpack is also available as a node module, which is often used in development mode in conjunction with HMR. When used in the form of a node module, it is also possible to use Webpack with frameworks such as Electron.js. Note, Electron.js is a runtime framework that allows a user to create desktop suite applications with HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript. You are also able to use the build on the fly in production because Node and Chrome are available together inside one app. For more complex builds, tools like Jest remove most of the boilerplate and allow development of tests with minimal configuration. Webpack is compatible with a variety of mocking tools which allow shaping of test environments. Webpack has a module resolution mechanism which assists tools running to test builds. Deployment outside of Webpack can be done in an NPM script, for example. Output public path property in Webpack can be configured dynamically. If you don't know before compilation and want to decide during compilation, then this technique is useful. Webpack can consume most NPM packages without a problem. Webpack's module resolution is versatile. Webpack can patch resolved modules. When specific dependencies expect globals, Webpack can inject them as needed. Using Webpack can expose modules as globals. This is necessary for certain development tooling. Webpack deploys to production in a stable fashion. You can't accidentally deploy code with missing images or outdated styles. Webpack automatically changes file names to hashes of the file contents, giving you CDN cache busting. No more version issues when developing or building. Webpack aids in internationalization, I18N, and localization, L10N, are important problems if you target multiple markets with your application. Webpack supports multiple approaches to I18N. As a starting point, Webpack can replace specific annotations, although more sophisticated alternatives are available. The problem of internationalization can be handled by Webpack pushing translations to a server. Webpack can also allow you to handle translating the actual application's interface language through the same API. Finally, given the state of browser support for various versions of JavaScript, Webpack is also useful in situations where it's not clear whether the native version will be smart for performance or not. Now, with those system development benefits covered, let's get to the benefits to application performance. Webpack can perform fancy magic that results in good performance related capabilities for our websites. Webpack knows how to concatenate and compress our JavaScript every way it can be done. Thereby, you can fix optimization issues without headaches. It allows you to manage load order, 
which isn't something you want to handle manually. Webpack aids in dead asset elimination. You only build only the images in CSS into your distribution folder that your application actually needs. This is especially useful in CSS rules. Webpack allows easier code splitting. For example, say your file homepage.js only requires specific CSS files. Webpack can easily build a homepage CSS file and so greatly reduce initial file size. This is great control over how assets are processed. An image below a certain size can be base64 encoded directly into your JavaScript for fewer HTTP requests. If a JSON file is too big, via Webpack you can load it from a URL. You can require style.less and it's automatically parsed by less into vanilla CSS. Webpack takes time and effort to master adequately, but given time and care, it will offer great speed benefits. Finally, let's talk about the etc. category for benefits of Webpack. The line between builder and task runner has become blurred thanks to community developed Webpack plugins. Sometimes these plugins are used to perform tasks that are usually done outside of Webpack, such as cleaning the build directory or deploying the build. Another example is the use of Webpack to aid in setting up cutting edge technologies such as IPFS, Interplanetary File System. API. IPFS is a system that aims to make local data accessible across a distributed network. Normally, when using Webpack, our usual aim is to place the data on a remote server to make that same data available locally. In order to do this, Webpack needs to have a bridge, called a shim, over which it can transform data and then write that data to a local file system. Another interesting place that I recently encountered Webpack playing a critical role was the high-performance website framework Gatsby.js. Gatsby.js leverages React, Babel, and yes, Webpack to produce static websites with none of the usual limitations. Now that we've covered the etc. category, let's spend a few moments talking about a little bit of criticism of how developers use tools like Webpack. Large numbers of developers rely very heavily on boilerplates to get their work done. Boilerplates is the term used to describe sections of code that with little or no alteration have to be included in many places. It is a term more often used when referring to languages which are considered verbose, that is, the programmer must write a lot of code to do minimal jobs. Don't get me wrong. Boilerplates of various kinds serve very important roles in an efficient development workflow. But the use of boilerplates obfuscates how a system they are simplifying functions. Webpack capabilities without proper study can also feed bad developer habits. But that's enough ranting about developer habits. Let's bring this lesson to a close. If you're building a complex front-end application with many non-code static assets, such as CSS, images, fonts, etc., then yes, Webpack will give you great benefits. If your application is small, doesn't have many static assets, and only needs to build one JavaScript file to serve to the client, then Webpack might not be for you. In our next lesson, we'll be continuing our discussion by looking at competitors to Webpack. Until next time, this is Matthew Raymer on behalf of Eduonix signing off. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also, check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.